Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. I'd like to start off with, since we haven't been here since February the 7th, if you had a birthday in Mar- uh, February and one last week, stand up. If you had a birthday last several weeks. Okay, got several. Several, yeah, several. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Any anniversaries in February and last week? No anniversaries? I know you had one, Casey. Yeah, Casey had one. Anybody else had one? Okay, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Okay, let's all stand for our fellowship course. It's amazing what praising can do. And now y'all all sing out. Y'all got three weeks or about a month worth of singing in y'all, so y'all sing out loud. <laughs> Get excited. Good morning. It is good to see y'all. I don't know where y'all been for three weeks. <laughs> Actually, I know where y'all been, and me too. It is so good to be back. And uh, it, just a report on me, because I've had several people asking. I'm doing good. Uh, doctor said just take it slow and easy. Uh, Tuesday, I had a new x-ray and all that stuff, and I still got pneumonia. But I'm feeling good. Just have to go slow and easy and Try to keep from stepping backwards instead of forward. So, so we're doing good. I pray you are, and it is good to see you. We welcome you to worship this morning, and those that are watching online, we're glad you can join us as well. Uh, this morning, just by way of announcements, uh, just remember our services that we're going to today getting back in the routine. I'll be online this afternoon at 5 with a Facebook Live message. And this Wednesday will be 6 o'clock. We'll have a deacons meeting at 7 we will have our business meeting, so I encourage you to join us for that. Today starts our Annie Armstrong Easter offering, and our focus on North American missions. There's a whole bunch of stuff on the table right back there behind Heath, and I'm going to walk through some stuff real quick. Some of it I'll talk about now, some in a few minutes, but as far as the Annie Armstrong Easter offering, there's some information about Annie Armstrong, so you know who she is and where this uh, offering came from. Some bookmarks with our uh, focus uh, missionaries that you can be praying for this week. I encourage you to do that. And along with that, there are some videos online that you can watch. I know the Children Baptist Association are posting them. You can go to nam.net and look at them. And so I encourage you to do that to hear about those specific missionaries. There are offering envelopes back there on the table. Our goal is $7,000. And so we'll take this offering uh, through Easter Sunday. And so I encourage you to give and see, pray and ask God what he would, he would have you give. And there's also prayer guides that will tell you about the missionaries and the ministries that they're doing uh, all over North America. 
And uh, so I encourage you to grab one of those and use that as you pray this week as we focus on North American missions. Um, Don't forget Vacation Bible School. We're getting ready for it. Some of you I'll get in touch with this week to put together our lead team and uh, start planning for that. We are planning to do in person. And uh, if that doesn't work, we're also in the kind of a parallel path. We're going to plan a virtual so that if for whatever reason, which we're praying that it won't happen, that we will be able to meet and have kids in person. So you'd be praying about that on March the 4th, excuse me, I don't know why I wrote March the 4th, on April the 1st, there's, there will be training, the Children Baptist Association will have a training event over at College Chapel, and so we'll tell you more about that as we continue and get closer to that. And don't forget, next Sunday we change times, so change your clocks on Saturday so you won't be late for church next week. There you go, there you go. <laughs> Uh, our blessing box is still being used, and so if you can, when you're out shopping for groceries or whatever, grab a few extra things and bring those to donate. Uh, that would be great to help in that ministry. Uh, any other announcements we need to share? Anything that you know of? All right. If we can, let's turn to a, a time of prayer and uh, share some things. Um, figure out what I did with the card. I, Hopefully you got a bulletin. Those are back there on the four-year table. And keep up with some things in there. I received a card uh, from the Donna Childress family. And it says, during a time like this, we realize how much our friends and relatives really mean to us. Your expression of sympathy will always be remembered. Thank you all so much for the Jack's gift card. We love and appreciate you all. And uh, so continue to pray for the Childress family. And uh, also pray for the George Plyer family as he passed away earlier this week, and his funeral was yesterday. Uh, um, Mr. Horace is having some back issues, so pray for Mr. Horace. Um, Tracy Bailey is still in the hospital, as far as I know. Uh, I haven't heard the last couple of days. He's at St. Vincent's, and um, he's getting better. They're giving him some treatments and stuff, but they had to give him quite a bit of blood this week, and so be praying for him. Uh, are there others that we need to pray for specifically? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Okay, so pray for the Price family and some tough decisions they have to make. Who? Oh, okay. So pray for Mr. Floyd. Okay. So pray for Miss Judy's mom having some tests this week. Any others? Yes, ma'am. Right, so pray for Claire's grandsons. Continue to pray for the pandemic and everything going along with it. And pray for our country and our leaders. Uh, a lot of things happening, a lot of things we need to be aware of. And so I encourage you to pray for that as well. Yes, ma'am. good that's good yeah continue to yeah, pray for our caregivers all the medical facilities and those because it's uh it's tough for them mm-hmm. that's yeah 
that's hard. Yes, ma'am. Okay, pray for Tessa and her class that are headed to the beach this weekend for safety. Continue to pray for our Who's Your One emphasis that we're in, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes as I uh, share with you this morning. Pray for the one that you would have an opportunity to serve and to share the gospel with sometime this year. All right, if you'll join me as we pray, and we'll just take a minute and have some silent prayer, and then I will close us in just a minute. Our eternal God and Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for a chance that we get to come back together as, as a local body of Christ and to be, get together and meet, join with others that are watching through technologies. And God, we just want you to be the number one priority, that you are supreme, you are our God and our Savior, our Redeemer. Lord, we lift you above all else when we praise you for what you do in our lives, for who you are to us. God, may we always be faithful to look to you and to put you in that position of prominence in our lives that we would let go of ourselves and, and take a step back and let you lead and guide us. God, we know there are many that are sick, many that are uh, struggling with various things and God we just pray that you would help us to remember those and to pray and to to encourage them as we have opportunity Lord I pray that you would heal according to your will that you would provide peace and comfort and strength for those that need it and God we pray for uh, all these requests that have been made this morning Lord, we do pray for our country and pray for the, those that need to know about you. God, may your church rise up, revive us, bring us renewal and spiritual awakening. That your church could reach out and touch those around us. and Help each one of us as we think about uh, one that you lay on our heart. That we should be able to have the opportunities to share and to minister to them and share uh, the gospel message with them that they could turn to you. And God, we ask that you draw them, move in their hearts. God, this morning as we continue to worship through song, through prayer, through uh, the spoken word, God, may you uh, move in our hearts. May we be open to what you would say to us this morning and that we would be changed because we have met with you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, his faithfulness to all generations. Let's stand together and let's make a joyful noise as we worship together. Away.
today, y'all don't have the mask on, so I can hear you better. I know y'all were singing loud, but I just couldn't hear you loud. Okay, victory in Jesus. I know, exactly. Loud and see your smiling faces, exactly. Victory in Jesus. Sing out on this one. great to know that we've got the victory that's uh encouraging for us should be anyway should get us real excited about where we're at even in the middle of a world that sometimes seems like it's going crazy completely lost any sense of sanity almost but God says that he's with us he's going to walk with us he's going to see us through Whatever comes. And that's exciting to know. I want to take a minute before I get into our message this morning. And try to just catch us up. to Since we've been out for a couple weeks with everything. And I want to say thank you to all of you for your prayers. Your contacts. Your support. Um, Marchetta of course she. Being as sweet as she is. Didn't get very sick. I guess that just. Anyway. She uh, <laughs> she never had anything. I mean, it's like, you know, a little cough, you know, and that's what Jeremy and I were talking about right before Ken. You know, it's so weird how this thing affects you. And uh, so many people have major issues. We've got a young man that 
I don't know what, Marshy 37, 38 maybe, as in one of my former youth, that he's been in the hospital for almost a month, I guess, and uh, is, is struggling. He's getting better, and then some, you know, don't have anything, and then anywhere in between. So we just need to keep praying that God leads us through this. And, of course, Governor Ivey continued the uh, mask mandate at least through April the 9th. And uh, so we're going to continue to do what we do, but we just need to be praying. But just to catch us up from where we've been the last few weeks since we've, I've not been able to, to share with you anything, on that table back there right behind the last pew, I just laid out some things just as reminders and some tools for you. Of course, we're doing the Who's Your One, and if you haven't gotten things, there's stuff back there, prayer guides, a bookmark, and some information about Who's Your One and some practical tips about evangelism. And the whole idea of the who's your one emphasis that our North American Mission Board has put together and is encouraging churches to do is to pick, let God lead you, choose one person that you know that needs to hear the gospel. And you commit to pray for them this, throughout this year. Pray for opportunities to serve them. Pray for opportunities to share the gospel. That they would come to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. And that's one of the things that we've been talking about that we're all called to. If you're a follower of Christ, the Great Commission says make disciples. Well, the first step in making a disciple is leading somebody to Christ. Because that's the first step for them to be a disciple. And so we want to do that. So over the last, well, the first couple of weeks we were doing this, of course, Sunday mornings we're preaching through uh, some sermons about evangelism. We talked about the first Sunday that we did it about going fishing and where Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. He wants us to fish for men. Then we talked about getting in the game. You know, you can't participate in a, in a game without getting in it. You, as long as you're sitting on the sidelines or up in the stand, you're not part of the game. And we want to encourage everybody to be in the game. On Sunday evenings, we're talking about uh, some tools and some methods to help us be more efficient and more comfortable with sharing the gospel. We need to remember that sharing the gospel for many of us is, is difficult. It, it's, let me back up. Sharing the gospel is not hard. Getting over our fears and our insecurities about that is what's hard. But God has given us the power. Once again, the Great Commission, the first thing he said, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. And then he ends the commission with saying, I'm going to be with you always, even to the end of the age. So logically, if he's with us, then we've got, we've got the power through the Holy Spirit in us. And we can share the gospel. We just need to get more comfortable with it. And so we've talked about on uh, the first Sunday night that we did this, I talked about telling your story. If you're a follower of Christ, you've got a story. And your testimony is just what your life was like before Christ, how you came to know Christ, and then how God is working in your life since. And every one of us can tell that story, and that's one of the most effective ways because nobody can argue that you know I can tell you what Jesus did in my life and you can't say no he didn't because it's my story God's given me that story and worked in my life we talked about walking down the road the Roman road and using several passages out of the book of Romans to share the gospel and then we a part of that night that I shared with you and this was the first night that I was in quarantine um Back there on that table is a, a New Testament. It says the covenant of God's love. Um, I came across this. I was exposed to it last year uh, when I, I was invited to go to Judson for a special event. And Dr. Richard Jackson, who pastored the North Phoenix Baptist Church for, uh, I don't know, 20-something years. And he developed this, and it is just a New Testament that is marked. And so when you open it up to the first page... It tells you, gives you a little thing that you can share with somebody or they can read. And it tells you what page to go to. And it walks them through the, through the gospel and how to come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. And one of the things he said was he called it, it, put a title on it, the covenant of God's love. Because some people, when you start talking about the Bible, they immediately are drawn back. But it's a little different when you start talking about the covenant of God's love. And people are more receptive and so that's the reason he titled that. But it is just the New Testament that's marked and got some key passages in it. Along with that, 
he produced, uh, him and his ministry produced, uh, God Loves You As You Are, which is basically out of that New Testament, the marked parts of it that give you the scripture and then the explanation. And so again, it's like a pamphlet, a, a track that you can just give to somebody and say, here, read it, you know, look at it, let's talk about it. You can give them the New Testament and say, check out this and just follow the instruction. And then have a conversation with them about the gospel. And they're back there, get them, uh, take them with you, use them as you are at work or at the store or wherever you may be to be able to share the gospel. And what we want to do is to be, for all of us, to get used to sharing about Jesus and, and the gospel message. And tonight, I'll go, well, one of the things I mentioned was a Mark New Testament. This is the um, Share Jesus Without Fear New Testament. Uh, Share Jesus Without Fear is a, a study that you can do. It just talks about ways, again, how to share the gospel and not be afraid because realize that when one of our biggest fears is being rejected. Well, when somebody rejects the gospel, they're not rejecting you. For whatever reason in their life, they are rejecting the Savior. They're rejecting Jesus Christ. We're just here to share the message and let them and God will work. It's his job to, to change somebody's heart. I can't do that. I just share the message and let him change. Um. Tonight, I'll be sharing about the best news. There are some cards back there. I encourage you to grab one. Join us tonight at 5, or if you have to watch later on, uh, we'll be talking about the best news, which is another method that Dr. James Merritt, who is pastor over in Georgia, has developed. And uh, it's a really, to me, a really exciting way because it talks about the bad news, the worst news, the good news, and the best news. And so we'll be sharing about that tonight at 5. Uh, when we do our Facebook Live. On Wednesday nights, I'm continuing to talk about prayer. This year, we're focusing on prayer. In the last couple of Wednesday nights that we've been able to share, uh, we've shared about uh, passionate prayer for the lost and praying for workers. Uh, Jesus told us the harvest is plentiful, but we are few workers. Pray that the Lord of the harvest would send workers. Well, one of the things that always strikes me about that verse is, if I'm going to pray for workers, you know the easiest way to answer that prayer? is me be the worker. Me be one of those that join in, in, in that harvest. But we also have to pray for others to do that as well, that we join together. I'll never forget, uh, I had the privilege of going to uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil on a mission trip. And the people there were so hungry for the gospel that we would share the gospel. And in these slums, in these what they call a favela, up on the hillside where people just put together whatever they could to live in. But we would go in and they'd share the gospel. And the people in that house would say, wait, stay right here. And they'd go up and down the street, a little muddy street, and gather as many people as they could and bring them and say, tell them what you told me. Today, we know that there are people around us that are hungry. They're looking for something. We've got to be the ones to show them, to point them to the Savior. And that's what God has called us to do. And so I encourage you as we continue this for the next couple of weeks, to pray that God would give you somebody, if he hadn't already, that you can share the gospel with. And when you have that opportunity to share, be bold. Share your faith. And then share with us what he has done. Invite people to church. Uh, statistically, uh, over 75% of people that are unchurched would go to church if a friend would ask them. 75%. We, all we have to do is ask them. And they will have a spiritual conversation. They would come to church. We've just got to invite them. And so I encourage you to do that. This morning as we think about what God is sharing with us and, and pointing us to. And uh, I want you to think about the importance of one. If you want to turn in your Bibles to, to the book of John. We'll be in John chapter 1. But as you're turning there, I want you to think about the importance of one dollar. 
Now, most of us look around and say, well, one dollar won't buy a whole lot today. But if you're trying to make a living, one dollar is one dollar closer to that than you had before. Think about one cookie. Now, if you're like me, one cookie's never enough. Or you think about them potatoes, what is it, is it Lay's? You can't eat but just one? Yeah, you got to have the whole bag. One point in a ball game. Uh, I'll never forget the game that I was in my senior year. And it's the only time this ever happened to me, the whole time I played. We were over at Shelby County. And we were down by one point, And I got fouled. Called time out. Coach looked at me and said, you're going to make both of them. Both free throws. That's all he said. I went out and hit the first one, tied the game. Get ready for the second one. And I actually hit it. And we won the game. One point makes all the difference in the world. One dollar can make all the difference in the world. We've got to remember that one can make a difference. It's kind of like the, the little boy on the seashore. And there's a phenomenon where starfish will wash up. And he's walking along the seashore picking up starfish and throwing them back in the water. And there's just hundreds of them all across the beach. And a man's walking down the beach and asking him what he's doing. He said, I'm throwing the starfish back. The man looks at him and said, you'll never save them all. It doesn't matter what you do. You, you just can't. And the boy picks up starfish and said, it matters to that one. Picked another and threw it. It matters to that one. That one, and you may be that one that is necessary to share the gospel with somebody and that be the one contact that they need that they'll turn their life over to Jesus Christ. Many disciples of Christ, even today, many of us forget about the importance of one. We think it's insignificant or we may think that we're insignificant. One invitation, one co-worker, one classmate, one neighbor, one contact, one message of hope. Think about this. Can you name one person who has come to Christ through your invite or your witness? And many of us would struggle to think of somebody. But the Bible consistently speaks about the one. Whether it's the one sheep that went astray, one coin that was lost, one uh, the lost son or the prodigal son, which is uh, there's a lot of ways you can look at that but you look at that one son that was lost one great pearl the gospel makes it all possible that the one is important it is significant and you are that one Romans 1 16 says for I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek it's the power of God in you that can lead somebody and change their life. I am not ashamed is what Paul said. Let's look at the importance of one for just a couple minutes. John chapter 1 beginning in verse 40. It says one of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. Jump down to verse 45. It says, Philip found Nathanael, and he said to him, We have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. And then in verse 49 Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. We see here three actions that we must take to be the one. First, you must commit to being an intentional witness. When you look at what happens here that Andrew, he went and got his brother and said, Come and see, we have found the Messiah, the Savior, the, the Chosen One. He was committed to be intentional about getting his brother to meet Jesus. 
And then you've got Philip who went and found Nathaniel. And Nathaniel was, you know, was skeptical. Because back then, Nazareth was known as a place that there just wasn't anything worth going to Nazareth for. There wasn't anything good there. And Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And what did Philip say? Come and see. You must be intentional. It doesn't just happen. We've got to be accountable and be partners together and encourage each other and pray for each other. But we have to be intentional to share the, to share the gospel. We've got to be intentional to be a disciple maker. So first, you've got to commit to being an intentional witness. Number two is go and tell. You've got to go and tell. Each one of us that are a disciple of Christ, a Christ follower, we can invite an unchurched person, an unsafe person. We can invite them to our home, have a meal together, share our story, share our testimony, tell the gospel story. We can invite uh, each family in our neighborhood and have, a, have a, just a big get-together, have a cookout or whatever. Have one of your family members tell their story. We can invite somebody to church. An unsaved or an unchurched person. As I said earlier, statistics tell us that over three quarters of the unchurched people would come to church if somebody asked them. Just to say, hey, come, come to church with me. They would come. Andrew brought Peter. Philip brought Nathaniel. Each one can bring one to Christ. Imagine if everybody in this building, everybody watching online, brought one person to Christ. It means it would double the number of people that are hearing this message right now. Number, it would double the number of people that are worshiping together right now. And then what if every one of them, as well as the rest of us, Get another one. If you start looking at the numbers, it is amazing how that grows. If each one would be the one to bring somebody to Christ. To be Andrew or to be Philip for somebody. And say, come and see. Come and see the Messiah. The Savior that I have met. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3 says, you, there, you yourselves are our letter of recommendation written on our hearts to be known and read by all. And you show that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. God has written on our hearts the gospel. He saved us. If you're a Christ follower, he, has, he gave his life for us, and we came to him. We repented and called on him, and he saved us. We are that letter to a world. We are that person that can come and, and share that message with somebody. We've got to remember the importance of one. That's the importance of you. That's the importance of me. God has called us to do that. Third thing is we've got to recognize and repent from excuses. Recognize and repent from excuses. Human beings, I think, it, it just blows my mind sometimes how much we make excuses for whatever. But God has called us. We've got to get past our, our spiritual authority that we just, just kind of lay back and relax. We're comfortable, so we're just going to sit back and do our thing. We'll come to church on Sunday. We'll come on Wednesday nights or whatever the, but we just kind of sit back and relax. We've got to get over a growing inclusiveness. Because here's the deal. This building is not the church. You and I are the church. But we get so caught up in so many times of our little holy huddles. We've got to get away from that. It's kind of that picture that I, I saw an illustration used with a bunch of teenagers. What the church should look like. Oftentimes our churches. If, you got, if we got up together. And made a circle. Holding hands. And face in. That's what we look like a lot of times. When really what it should be is. We should be in a circle. Holding hands facing out. Because God's called us to go. And bring people to him. 
In our world today, there's a growing inclusiveness that all roads lead to God. And that is a lie from hell itself. There's one way, and that is Jesus Christ. And we've got to tell people. And that seems intolerant. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit tonight. And, and to a point it is. But if we believe that's the word of God, then we've got to say that is the only way, is Jesus Christ. And I believe that with all my heart. There's a growing, and this has been going on for years, a disbelief in hell. If we really believe there's a burning hell, a place of torment that people are going to spend eternity, that ought to change the way we look at people and share the gospel. Because we ought not want anybody to go there if that's the case. Jesus spoke more about hell than he did heaven. And if he spoke, and if we believe heaven is real, then we must believe that hell is real. And we've got to tell people that. One of our biggest things is our busyness. We've got to make it a priority, share the gospel, to point people to Jesus. We get so busy that we just fly by whatever's happening around us. Somebody at work or somebody in our neighborhood we know is hurting. And we just, we got too much to do. We're too busy. We got too many things on our to-do list, on our calendar. We've got to make it a priority and get past that. The fear of rejection, I already mentioned that a little bit. Very few people are actually antagonistic if you share the gospel with them. If you have a spiritual conversation with them. Very few will be antagonistic. Most people are welcoming to, to talk about where they are in their spiritual journey. Most people, if you said something, for example, how can I pray for you? I've never had anybody say, I don't want you to pray for me. They all tell me something that they, they want you to pray for. They're open to having those discussions, those talks, if you will share and then we talked and mentioned about the, the desire to be tolerant. Josh McDowell wrote a book, and this is, book's probably 20 years old now, uh, called The New Tolerance. And in our world today, our world is telling us that you should be tolerant of everybody. Of course, we know that when it comes to Christianity and, and Judeo-Christian beliefs and values, that our world is not tolerant of those. But that's what Josh McDowell said the new tolerance is. And unfortunately, the church has fallen into that. We're going to be tolerant of everybody so that we don't cross anybody. We don't want to say anything about other ways that people say that you can get to, get to God and get to heaven. And so in a sense, we are intolerant because God says he is the only way. The narrow way. That by no other name can man be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. We need to make sure and get past that. We've got to get over just being out of the habit. You know, they say you can develop a habit in 21 days, 21 straight days. Whether it's prayer, whether it's, you know, whatever it may be, that's what it takes to develop a habit. Unfortunately, we lose the habit a lot quicker than that. We've got to get in the habit of thinking and praying and saying, God, show me opportunities to have spiritual conversations with somebody. One of the scariest things that I've read recently is the church not being intent on reaching the laws. We need to repent of that. Statistics tell us it takes 85 church members are needed to reach one unsaved person. Let that sink in a minute. To reach one person with the gospel, it takes 85 evangelical church members for that person to come to Christ. There's not 85 people in this room. We've got to get past that. We've got to repent of that and say, God, we want to share the gospel. We want people to come to know you. We must be intentional. We must be accountable and encourage each other. We must be disciple makers. We must go and tell. We must repent of these things, that, these excuses of, of why we can't or why we don't. 
It's like somebody once said, the Great Commission is not, a, not something to be considered. It's a command to be obeyed. He didn't give us an option. That is his way of sharing his story and leading people to him is through us. We must do that. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, Al Denson had a song called Be the One. Some of you may remember it. It says, will you be the one to answer to his call? Will you stand when those around you fall? To take his light into a darkened world. Tell me, will you be the one? God's called us to be the one. Will you be that one? There's somebody in your circle of influence. Somebody in your world. If I can put it that way. That needs to hear the gospel. And you may be the only one. That they'll listen to. You may be the only one that has the opportunity to share the gospel. I want to challenge you to be that one. Be the one to be like Philip or Andrew. Hey, come and see the Messiah that I know, that I have met, that I have found. Be the one. Will you pray with me? we pray, I encourage you to think of that one. Who it might be that God has put in your path. That you can say, I will be the one. I will be intentional. I will be committed. I will go to tell them. Father God, thank you for this morning. I thank you for... The testimony of Andrew and Philip. Who went and found somebody and said come and see the Messiah. The one that Moses and the prophets talked about. Father for each one of us. God I pray that you would burn in our hearts. The desire to be the one. That would look around us. And, and share. Just like Philip. And Andrew. That we could say, come and see Jesus. And that we would be faithful to share the gospel with them. Father God, as we go out this morning, and throughout this week, remind us as we encounter people in our lives, remind us that we are the one that you have sent into the world to be a witness. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I encourage you as you go out that if you'll grab some of the tools back there, some of the things uh, that are on that table that you can share with somebody else. And if we take it, if they all get used up, we'll get more. Because that's what God's told us to do is to share the gospel and share the word. I'd encourage you to make sure and pick up one of these cards and join us tonight at 5 as I'll talk through the best news, and how we can share the best news with folks around us. So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching online. If you would, stand with me. I'll read our benediction. And then I'll ask Philip if he would pray for us as we go. Our benediction this morning is from Hebrews chapter 13. It says, Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Philip, pray for us.